I would especially like to thank Professor Aniko Reich for the invitation and the opportunity to present the title problem. I would also like to thank Professor Laszlo Trochani, an outstanding lawyer with whom I have the great honor of working on various levels. My presentation is about migration. It is inherent in human history. This is how we define a change of habitual residence or temporary residence by natural persons. It can be permanent or temporary. Its purpose may be inter alia tourism, education, treatment, pilgrimages, or earning money. Of course, also in this case, we encounter a number of definitions that define a narrower or broader concept of a migrant, of migration. Its forms include immigration, immigration, re-emigration, refugiehood, evacuation, and repatriation. The issue of admitting foreigners to a territory is, as a rule, regulated by national law. The freedom of action of states is, however, to some extent limited by international agreements. As noted by outstanding Polish professors of international law, teachers of many generations of lawyers, Remigiusz Bieżanek and Janusz Simonides, no state is obliged to admit foreigners, people who do not have its citizenship to its territory. It may prohibit access and may set conditions whose fulfillment determines the concept. In the modern world, there is in principle no state that would admit all foreigners into its territory without any restrictions and conditions or would not let anyone in. Certain restrictions on the freedom of action in this respect may result from bilateral and multilateral international agreements that states conclude on matters related to the movement of persons. An examination of the practice and internal legislation leads to the conclusion that while tourists obtain permissions to, permission to enter relatively easily, in the case of economic immigration, this consent is granted selectively. The end of quotation. As I said, migration is defined as a change of place or of residence or temporary stay by natural persons. It may be external when it involves crossing state borders or internal when it takes place within one country. At this moment, we will discuss the first of these, external migration. As indicated in the doctrine, the decision to emigrate is made voluntary by emigrants and can be wide out at, at any time, which means uh, that migrants can, in principle, return to their home country. The lack of an unambitious definition of a migrant in the binding acts of international law makes the protection granted to this category of people ambivalent and is largely determined by national legislation, including adopted immigration procedures. Hence, we can distinguish the Euro migrants and the de facto migrants. International law pays particular attention to refugees. This matter is regulated in particular by the Geneva Convention relating to the status of refugees of 1951, amended by the New York Protocol of 1967. These issues are also tackled in the acts of international humanitarian law, including the Fourth Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian person, persons in time of war of uh, 1949 and the first additional protocol of uh, 1977 to the Geneva Conventions of uh, 1949. Respective legal acts have been also adopted by the European Union and include 
directive of the European Parliament and of the Council of 2011 on standards for the qualification of third country nationals or stateless persons as beneficiaries of international protection for a uniform status for refugees or for persons illegal before subsidiary protection and for the content for of the protection granted and uh, regulation of the European Parliament and of the Council of 2013, establishing the criteria and mechanisms for, for determining uh, the member state responsible for examining an application for international protection lodged in one of uh, the member states by a third country national or a stateless Uh, definite as the process of changing the place of permanent residence in the event of a threat of persecution. Contrary to migration, that it does not take place entirely vol voluntarily and is the result of the political and social situation in a given place, most often, but not limited to armed contexts. The author quotes the division of refugee court into external occurs when a person forced by the situation leaves the state of which he or she is a citizen and resigns from its protection, recognizing that the states, state authorities have not uh, duly fulfilled their obligations uh, to provide protection, and into internal when a person forced by the situation leaves the place of permanent residence but uh, does not uh, cross the border recognized as uh, international. She adds that uh, in order to avoid legal controversy, it is postulated to use the terms internal displacement or internal settlement instead of internal refugeehood. Because according to the letter of the law, for example, Geneva Convention of 1941, International protection applies only to external refugees. However, the practical activities of organizations dealing with the issues, for example, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, usually cover both types of refugees. Uh, the definition of a refugee is provided in the Geneva Convention of uh, 1951. Pursuant to Article 1, Paragraph A, Subparagraph 2 of the Convention, the term refugee applies to any person who, as a result of events occurring before uh, 1st January 1951, and owing to well uh, founded fear of being persecuted for reasons of race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group or political opinion is outside the territory of his nationality, uh, um, is outside the country of his nationality and, and is unable or owing to such fear, is unwilling to avail himself of the protection of that country. Or who, not having a nationality and being outside the territory of his former habitual residence as a result of such events, is unable or owing to such fear, is unwilling to return to it. Moreover, the provision states uh, that the status under the convention is also granted to any other person who has been or could be recognized as a refugee on the basis of other enumerated in the document international agreements. The definitions referred to in this convention is strictly modified by removing time and territorial limitations with regard to circumstances that may form, uh, form 
uh, the basis for recognition as a refugee by Article 1 of the protocol relating uh, the status of refugees of uh, 1967. The primary act of international law regulating the issue of refugees is the Geneva Convention of 1951 and uh, uh, amended by the uh, New York Protocol of uh, 1967. These acts regulate the rights and obligations of refugees, the procedure of obtaining refugee status, and the positive and negative uh, obligations of the state in respect to refugees. As indicated in the doctrine, in practice, states granted a broader protection than in, it resulted from the provisions of the Convention of uh, 1951. This is called subsidiary protection namely protection granted to a foreigner who does not meet the conventional conditions for granting refugee status, by nonetheless granted in the event that his return to the country of origin may expose him to a real risk of suffering serious harm. has not been regulated in a single convention type document. Migrations are also a consequence of and conflicts. For these reasons, the international agreements in this area of uh, international uh, humanitarian law of armed conflicts refer to them as well. The fourth Geneva Convention uh, relative the, to the protection of civilian persons in time of war of uh, uh, 1949 uses the term refugee although it does not define it. Moreover, Article 73 of the uh, first additional protocol of uh, 1977 um, stipulates that persons who before the beginning of hostilities were considered as stateless persons or refugees under the relevant international instruments accepted by the parties concerned or under the national legislation of the state of uh, refugee or state of residence, should be protected persons within the meaning of uh, the fourth Geneva Convention in all circumstances and without any adverse distinctions. Migrant workers are another form of migrants and their status is regulated by the conventions uh, Nineteen seventy-five. These regulations deal with the recruitment, job agency, and working conditions of migrant workers. In turn, the European Convention on the Legal Status of Migrant Workers was adopted within the framework of the Council of Europe in nineteen seventy-seven. Also, to Article One, Paragraph One, for the purpose of this convention, the term migrant worker shall mean a national of a contracting party who has been authorized by another contracting party to reside in its territory in order to take up paid employment. These conventions of uh, the ILO and the Council of Europe adopt as a rule that a foreigner, migrant worker, needs to obtain a permit for the entry and employment on the territory 
uh, of the given state unless the individual consent is not required uh, from the citizens of certain countries or other groups of people. Another act of international law regulating this matter is the International Convention on the Protection of the Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families of 1990. For the purposes of the convention, the term migrant worker refers to a person who is to be engaged, uh, is engaged or has been engaged in a remunerated uh, activity in a state of which he or she is not a national. Other acts of international law, including universal treaties, uh, such as International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights of 1966, United Nations Convention Against Torture, and other cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment or punishment of 1984 and the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child of 1989 refer partly to some aspects of the statutes of foreigners. The regional acts, such as the Chapter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union and the European Convention on Human Rights, also refer to these issues. The international community has established a number of institutions handling the status and rights of migrants as a whole and their individual types. These institutions include uh, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees or the United Nations Special Reporter on the Human Rights of Migrants and the Committee on the Protection of the Rights of all Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families which is a treaty body of the International Convention on the Protection of the Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families. The United Nations Special Reporter on uh, the Human Rights of uh, Migrants operates within the scope of the special procedures of the United Nations Human Rights Council. This mandate was created in 1999 by the Commission on on human rights. The task of the special reporter is to examine ways to, and means uh, to overcome the obstacles to full and effective protection of the human rights of all migrants at all stages of migration and elaborate recommendation and strengthening the promotion, protection and implementation of the human rights of all migrants. The mandate of the Special Reporter on the Human Rights of Migrants covers of all countries, irrespective of uh, whether a state has ratified the International Convention on the Protection of the uh, Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families of uh, 1990. This is just uh, an outline of the migration problem that I was able to present in such a short time. Therefore, I encourage you to read the entire chapter on this topic, which will be published as a part of the book on international public law from a, a Central European perspective edited by Professor Aniko Reich. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>